Okay, I like Fletch. Um, I've heard Caddyshack is good. I've never seen it. Don't really like Vacation. I don't know. I just don't really like Chevy Chase, I think. He's pretty good when he's like kind of cocky and just like this cool guy. But he usually plays an idiot, and it's it's just not funny to me. And this movie, Cops and Robertsons, was like painful to watch. It's not all Chevy Chase's fault. The writing was just really dumb. But man, I can't stand this movie. The premise of the movie is all right. Chevy Chase plays a typical family man whose real passion is the police. He's obsessed with TV police shows, but he's not respected by his own family. They just don't take him seriously. Hey, Kev, got a surprise for you. Oh, Dad, what'd you do that for? You're supposed to catch it, son. In fact, no one seems to take him seriously, as shown in this scene in a diner where a waiter openly disrespects him and he does nothing about it. I said no cream cheese. Excuse me? But then one day, the police approach him at work and tell him they need to use his house as a stakeout because his next-door neighbors are criminals. I can't remember if they said exactly what kind of criminals they are. They're just bad guys. So the cops want to use Chase's house to keep an eye on them and watch them do crime so they can catch them, I guess. The cops say they have to move in the same night, but Chevy Chase doesn't want to tell his wife until the morning. For some reason, he says uh, she's better in the morning. So he lets them secretly spend the night and promises to tell his wife in the morning. And this is where the movie loses all hope of plausibility and delves into one ridiculous scenario after another, where every single character acts completely stupid and unrealistically. Seriously, every scene in this movie is an excuse as a setup for some supposedly funny hijinks, but nobody acts like any normal person would at any time. So instead of laughing, I just kept going, like, what? What's happening? Just check out this scene in its entirety. It's the first morning, the morning that Chevy Chase was supposed to tell his wife what's going on. So he accidentally sleeps in, even though in the previous scene he said he always gets up early. So I guess he just was sleepy today and this really important day where he had to get up early and tell his wife. Anyway, one of the cops gets up knowing he's in a family's home who doesn't know he's there, but he decides that he's going to go take a shower in their bathroom. So he goes in the bathroom, puts his clothes on the bathtub, gets in the shower. Then the wife walks in, puts these totally foreign clothes that are sitting in the bathtub into the hamper without questioning why they're there. She walks past the glass shower door that you can see through but, but doesn't notice a naked guy inside. The cop, who didn't hear her do any of that, suddenly hears when she leaves the room and closes the door. So he sticks his head out, doesn't see anyone, doesn't seem to register that his clothes are gone and then just decides to keep taking a shower. Then the wife comes back in and speaks to him because apparently she thinks it's her husband in the shower. This makes him look out of the shower, but still he doesn't see her. Like, this guy is worse than a guard in Metal Gear Solid. What was that noise? Then the wife joins him in the shower while not at any point looking into the shower of what she's doing. Then she bumps into him they both turn around and, and scream at each other comically. So the cop runs out of the shower, now realizes he doesn't have a towel. So he bursts out of the bathroom and runs directly into this teenage daughter's room to expose himself to her. He stands there for like a whole minute while she just throws things at him. At this point, the older cop comes out of hiding, of sleeping, I guess. And then he gets attacked by the wife with a plunger. And then the naked cop finally leaves the teenage daughter's room and like stumbles and falls on Chevy Chase. And then the older cop goes like, I'm a cop and that naked guy is also a cop. And then he threatens to shoot everyone if they attack him with a plunger again. With all like the rousing classical music that's playing during this scene, it's obviously supposed to come off as like a hilarious farcical romp. But seriously, who acts like this? Who are these people? You don't just hide in someone's house and then openly take a shower in the morning. Like, when you know everyone else is going to be taking a shower. You just you go in and, and take a shower knowing full well they have no idea you're in there. It just... 
it doesn't make any sense. I know I get the the setup for all the the funny hilarity, but I couldn't get past how stupid these people are. The rest of the movie is just one forced setup after the next, while the family starts to accept the older cop as like this uncle figure because he's really confident and he's cool and he's not like the dad. But it's not really sold well. He's just kind of a jerk all the time and they they seem to like that. But I guess this scene where he pretends to murder the youngest child is supposed to show how much they've bonded. Because the younger child dresses like a vampire and, and then the older cop like finally gets sick of it and pretends to stab him through the chest. Anyway, with a story like this, you might expect Chevy Chase to somehow grow as a character. You know, learn something from the older cop, gain the respect of his family. But all he does is like constantly get jealous of the older cop and then eventually take his badge and go back to that diner where he was disrespected and arrest the waiter using the badge. So he impersonates a police officer, which is a federal crime, but it's all fine. The older cop shows up and it turns out the waiter has a criminal record, so it's fine that he impersonated a police officer. Nothing bad happens about that. And even though the printout sheet that they show shows that the waiter already served time for his crimes, so I don't know what the big deal about that is, but then they book him and he goes to jail and Chevy Chase feels really cool like a cop. So then in the final act of the movie, the criminals figure out that there's a stakeout next door and they go and take the family hostage. And Chevy Chase has to go rescue them all because the cops are taken hostage too. And this led to the only scene in the movie that actually made me laugh. Chevy Chase gets this rope with an anchor and takes it up the stairs here. I don't know, I just thought it, that was a kind of funny scene. But then what he does with the rope, he like goes on the roof and uses it to, to throw onto a tree to swing across to the neighbor's house and then he just hits the wall like a Looney Tunes character. So it didn't really go anywhere and it was kind of a stupid joke. But anyway, after a struggle, the younger cop finally gets his gun and has his gun on the bad guys who are holding this family hostage and he tells them to freeze. He doesn't shoot them. They're currently pointing a gun at these innocent people, threatening to kill them, and he doesn't do anything. He just says, freeze. And then the bad guys are like, no. So then he drops his gun for them, and he doesn't shoot them. But then the wife manages to grab a gun and does the same thing. She pulls the gun on the bad guys, and this time it works. And they, like, give up, and then the old cop punches them. And then they win. And now, for some reason, Chevy Chase is respected by his family, even though he didn't do anything except uh, commit a federal crime and fail to swing into the neighbor's house. But for some reason, I guess we're supposed to accept that he's grown in some way. And the older cop is now kind of part of the family as like an older uncle, even though we really have never learned anything about him. Like, does he have a family of his own? Did he lose his family? We don't know. It doesn't matter. The movie's over and it's supposed to be like a happy ending. I could almost accept this movie as like a meta commentary on what it's supposed to be, like a parody of this kind of movie. Like it's ironically not developing the characters, ironically creating these absolutely absurd scenarios that would never exist in real life and and character interactions that are just totally implausible. But I don't think the movie is that smart. I think it thought it was really funny, and I guess it's a product of the 90s. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, looking at the YouTube comments, it seems like there's a lot of fans on this movie. A lot of people were glowing with nostalgia for it. And, you know, humor is a personal thing. So, good for those people. I'm glad they got something out of it. But they're wrong! This movie sucks!